And now for the Monero development segment. Hey, Dude, what's up, man? Nothing much. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Speaking of building businesses, here, here's a guy who spends a lot of time doing that. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> madman. How's it going? Uh, man? Before you get into this week's, uh, what, what's going on with everything? I don't think we, we've heard an update recently with all your your exploits. Um, everything's going pretty good. I'm trying to make um, um, an on shop peer to peer again, so I'm doing some development for that, and it's going well. People don't read instructions, so I'm trying to make it very, very clear. But it's going pretty well. Now, when you say make in on shop peer to peer, because right now the way it's working is, so when it's peer to peer, so people will be going. Yeah, there'll be a marketplace of people buying essentially Amazon products for other people, right? Yeah, essentially, yes, using um, Amazon Locker and Amazon Hub locations, and then eventually you'll be able to get it delivered to your home with some restrictions. But pretty much making like a peer-to-peer -peer system with that. And also a really cool thing I'm working on right now is um, there's this new project. It's funded by like some, it's actually funded by I think it's some, in part by the Ethereum Foundation. And it, and it lets you verify a web page um, cryptographically using cryptography. So basically you could um, have cryptographic proof that you you delivered an object to a thing, right? If, if you trust Amazon like an Oracle essentially. And so that so way it that solves a problem for you. Yeah, exactly. That way I it disputes would just be like, hey, can you show me your your um the signature of this page? And you're like, yeah, Amazon says I delivered to this. I'm like, oh, okay. So disputes be pretty much straightforward. And most systems rely on like reputation, which is it it works, but it's like um there's some issues with that. But hopefully um we'll see when it launches. We'll see. <laughs> and and when it does launch as a peer-to-peer, -peer, like uh, you know, how how what what type of fees will will people be making you know or what kind of profit will, will people be making in terms of uh buying products and shipping them for others i have no idea honestly because right now you can set any price that you want hmm. i i don't market, know what the market will, will determine right right yeah i'm i, I charge 10 percent, and i get like maybe like an order every two days we did like maybe like seven thousand in in volume holy shit yeah so wow. if you seven thousand over the course of a month sorry that's amazing man that's oh. <laughs> yeah, hey. seven so, thousand in terms of like gro gross gross sales right yeah like, gross sales so maybe after exchange fees i don't know somewhere around like five percent six percent profit if you, if you like value my time at zero, you know, just, just <laughs> but I, at running a business, I'm sure, I, I'm sure that's how, you know how that works. But, um, so we'll see, I mean, maybe, maybe 3%, maybe two, maybe people only want a discount. I mean, personally, I owe one out of business. So I, 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 I don't know, be honest with you. So are people <laughs> ex ordering more expensive things or are you just getting like a ton of orders? You said like one every couple of days for just you. Yeah, the order, um, the each order has gone up. So I, I started off doing it at zero and worked my way up to ten percent, just increasing the price over time. So over as I did increase the price, I didn't notice that the higher priced items were being purchased. But I don't know if that's because people trust me more, or because only people who buy high priced items want to pay ten percent. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And then so once you make it peer to peer, it, mm -hmm. it uh, so it won't just be you know, Degoon doing it, there'll be, you know, mm -hmm. other people on there. And then I guess they'll, they'll be rated and whatnot based on their, you know, how reliable they are as, as, uh, I don't know what you're calling them on the website. What do you, what do you Oh mean? yeah. I'm, I'm going to still purses. I purse IOS like earner and like shopper. Okay. You know, so I'm going to steal their language. Hopefully okay. they don't mind. They, they won't be using it anymore. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, well, there's, there's a, you know, a vacuum there. Right. So, Maybe you'll you'll pick up some of those those people, right? Maybe we'll see. Because I mean, it's a little scary when you see someone go out of business. It's like, yeah, great, gonna get more customers, and you're like, wait a minute, why did they go out of business? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, wait a minute, what's, what's... <laughs> what do they know that I don't know? Yeah, what do they know that I don't know? So it'll, you know, it's software, so it's, it doesn't take a lot to deploy. So I'm just gonna deploy it. Hopefully, within a week or two, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. That's All awesome. Right. And that shows that you actually care about the um, the privacy and like doing yeah. this for people. Because like if you really wanted to, you could just leave it to yourself and raise it to, you know, even 15 percent. Right. Yeah. Which 
uh, you know, you, you do a lot of good work. So honestly, that would, you know, for a lot, that'd still be pretty reasonable. But like, you're allowing other people to compete in the space. Yeah, I, I want to make it like pretty affordable. Right? That's the goal, right? In my dream world is to have it so that people do it because they want Monero. That way, like, there's no, I mean, even 3%, 4%, man, that's good money. But like, it's, it's not like, you know, like, no one's like waking up, oh my God, I made 3% on this, on this sale. Whereas people are like, I really want to get Monero and like, I really want to get Monero in a, in a non-KYC manner using a credit card, my Amazon account. I think that would be really cool to see, to enable that for people. And people on the other end can get their orders fulfilled with like not that much upcharge on it, you know, because two, two to three percent for anonymous orders is like, oh, that's like nothing, yeah, it's like nothing, right? Versus like when it's just me, I have to charge 10 percent because like I'm doing everything, I don't really have time to process, you know, 10 orders a day. So we'll, we'll see how it goes, though. Yeah, it, it has the potential to be a great utility for the ecosystem, like you said, helping people get essentially Monero KYC free, they have to put yeah. in some effort to earn it. Uh, and then helping others spend spend their Monero, essentially KYC for it. Um, very cool, man. Very cool. Um, so yeah, go ahead, jump in on the on this week's dev report. Oh yeah. So I want to just keep it short because I know there's um, as Body said, some very exciting things going on in the space. So that was um, the XRP ruling is way above my head. I don't know what it meant, but I'm so glad to listen to Body explain it. So I just want to keep it. A short let like um i guess dive into not really a dive a walk into why the 10 block transaction lock exists on monero and hopefully there are talks about removing it in seraphist that's been as far as i know has been like my understanding of has been changed given like the full membership proof announcement by luke so i don't know how it's going to actually look but there's a lot of talks about removing it so we're going to cover basically why it exists in the first place and some ways you can go about removing it essentially any questions so far no no no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um so basically depending on who you ask right some people say um i would say the biggest the biggest issue that monero has a couple usability is going to be the 10 block lock i personally don't think it's that big of an issue but i, I do agree that it's the the biggest usability issue that i've come across so far and so people are talking about removing it. Once again, I don't think it's a big issue. If I use Monero like online, so waiting, you know, 20 minutes is not that big a deal. And also I use my wallet a lot. So I also don't usually I have funds, but we'll get into that later. But basically, this is the biggest Monero's issue. And basically the issue is or hurdle right now is that you have to wait 10 blocks, which on average is gonna be 20 minutes before you can receive newly um spent funds, essentially. And it doesn't apply for all the funds because the way a wallet works, when you send a transaction, you don't necessarily send all of the funds every time. Just for some of the funds that are involved, you have to wait 20 minutes. And if you're a new person to Monero and you don't have a lot of Monero in your wallet, it could end up being all of Monero you have being locked up. And the question is, why does it exist? And Tevador, and there's actually a GitHub issue that I linked to at the end where they talk about removing this from Monero. Basically, Tevador gives a great explanation of, of why this exists. And he says the reason for a 10 block lock time is to confirm the decoys and prevent the transaction from being invalidated by a chain reward. So basically you're locking it in for 10 blocks so that the chain doesn't reorg and cause issues with the transaction, essentially. Basically there, there could be some privacy transactions, which is a really big issue. Um, sorry, privacy issues, which is the biggest issue. And there's also some, some minor design issues because Monero was designed with the idea of having the 10 block lock in place. And you might be asking, what is a blockchain reorg? Um, basically, when a, when you make a blockchain, it's peer to peer, right? So you can get some lag in the network and, and that could result in having multiple chains, usually just two chains. And these are usually pretty short depending on the blockchain that you use. Like Ethereum is known for having pretty long blockchain reorgs. Um, generally speaking, um, chains with higher block times have higher blockchain um, reorg. Sorry, lower block times, you have a higher blockchain reorg um, possibility. And I'm not going to tell you how many Monero has had in the five years. So that's going to be a quiz at the end. But basically, when you have a blockchain reorg, you can get a split like you see here. We have a blockchain here and you have one 3A at the top and then 3B at the bottom. This is pretty normal. It's not like bad or anything. And like I said, different chains have different um, characteristics that lead to different times this happens. 
But basically, when this happens, it's only an issue because you don't know which chain to is the real chain, right? So um, the top chain might be different than the bottom chain. One chain might have certain transactions in them, and then the other chain, some chain might have both transactions in them, and then that might create a double spend situation. So once again, blockchain reorgs are very common. I believe I want to say all like large decentralized blockchains have them at some rate. You know, some have like one or two, some have like 10, 20, very common thing. And that's what creates the issue with the the um 10 block lock. So the first issue and the reason the 10 block lock exists, or one of the issues with it, is that if you reorg the blockchain, right, you can't reference the outputs. Because the way that Monero was designed was it, it was designed way back in the day, even, even I believe before Ring CT, to have different to have pools. So instead of having like um like a a reference to the the, the outputs, they're put into a massive pool and they reference by transaction ID or amount ID. You can see that in the bottom right here. It's a little pixelated. But basically, if you, if you have a chain reorg, right, all of these outputs can move around. And then say I send Doug some money. And then, but on one chain that gets reorged, the money that I sent Doug might not be on the chain in the exact same place, which can create issues for your, your wallet software, right? Because if I think that I sent Doug output three, the chain reorgs, and really I sent out Doug output two, it can be a little confusing, but it's not a big issue. Um, Tevador said that you can fix it like Bitcoin did essentially. And what Bitcoin does here is you can see here they have the fact that each transaction references a transaction internally into itself. So basically, instead of having a big pool where transactions have like ID, you know, 3036, they're localized to the transaction. So if I sent Doug a transaction, it would see that transaction ID zero would be the one I sent him. So even if the transaction moved around, right, the transactions that it references aren't moved around. So it's not a big issue. Am I, am I going too fast? I want to be sure I'm being straightforward. Any questions so far? Yeah, this is good stuff. Keep going. Yeah. So basically, easy fix, not a big deal. So basically, if you have a chain reorg and some of the outputs move around, no biggie. You can just do something like Bitcoin did and reference them internally into the transaction. Easy fix, no big deal. But the, the big real issue, right, is going to be if the output is completely removed from the blockchain via a double spin. Like I said, a double spin is really the one of the biggest issues here for privacy and usability. And a double spin is when someone on the on the top chain, if there's a chain split, and then someone spins the same coins on both chains, essentially. Right. So let's say the top chain is on, on the top chain, I send Doug um, $10 in Monero. And then on the bottom one, I go and I send tux Tuxedo that same amount of money, right? Both of these chains can't be true. I can't spend the same amount of money on both chains. That would break everything. So eventually, once this chain reorg goes back down to one chain, some either Doug is going to lose that money or Tuxedo is going to lose that money. That's just the nature of double spins on a chain reorganization. And that creates a really big issue for decoys, right? So you can imagine that if you have a decoy in your transaction and then a chain reorg makes you makes you make that transaction again and you're missing decoys it will be pretty easy to see which one was a real spin maybe not super easy but it will be it would hurt your privacy essentially and the and the way to address that one of the simplest ways to explain it is to basically don't include double spins in your decoy algorithm selection so basically you can ask a piece of code to the software that says if this transaction has the possibility to be double spent don't include it in your decoys and Tevador proposed a solution also in the GitHub repo that I got most of this information from. So the big issue, I would say this is the biggest issue, right? Because if you have a chain reorg, and on one chain you spend a certain amount of decoys, and on another chain you spend a different amount, in a, in a chain reorganization, it would be I could just look at them and see, oh, this person, this is probably the real spin. And this is also a big issue for forks of Monero. I believe there was a fork of Monero. What was it? Like, was it? What was the name of that? Doug? It happened like a couple years ago. It didn't go anywhere. Which which one? Which one? Monero. Like, wasn't there like a big one? You you had an interview with the with I believe it was JW intern. Y'all talked about it a little bit. I can't. The name leaves me though right now. I forget. But, the um, original for there was Monero V or something. No. Yeah, was it? Yeah, something like Monero V. And it's a really big issue because if you fork the chain, the decoys that are real become pretty obvious, right? 
So it's a really big issue. And this sort of happens in reorganizations also. Could you, could you think of a reorg as sort of like a mini fork? So you have those issues show up again. Mm-hmm. And um, full membership proofs also mix this up. Um, Luke said a comment here. I don't really quite understand what Luke said here or how, I'll be honest with you, I just don't. This information is so new. And I basically, I'm the guy that reads things online. So if it, if no one's written up a good write-up about it, I don't really quite want to speak on it. But I do can glean that full membership proofs might mix things up again But how we can remove things. But I do believe that they're working diligently to remove this 10 block lock since it is the biggest um, usability hurdle in Monero. And it should be possible because I don't think, I think Zcash has full membership proofs for a certain, if, if you use them, right? And I, I don't believe they have a Tim like a, a lock on their transaction. So it should be perfectly possible to remove the Tim block lock membership proof. Um, sorry, remove the Tim block um, lock on transactions. And once again, I, I don't think it's a big issue, but let's say you're at Monerotopia and you just got some Monero and you and you got to wait 20 minutes to spin it again. It can sort of be an issue, but um, there are some current fixes running right now that I'm going to get to at the end of this. But before I leave this section, is there any questions I go too fast? No, good, good stuff. I mean, we we often talk about this issue. I look at it two ways, right? I mean, mm-hmm. if you're if you're using Monero every day, you know, you got your your Monero Uju or Cake Wallet, and you're sending Monero every day, uh, and you're getting you and you're receiving transactions mm-hmm. every day, you don't run into this issue. It's it's, yeah. it's non-existent. It's it's the use case where somebody gets sent Monero for the first time, right? And uh, then they have they have to sit and wait 20 minutes before they can turn around and then send that Monero. But if you have an active wallet where you have you know transaction a lot of transactions coming in, um, then you ne- you never run it. You run into that issue. You could receive an, a transaction, turn around five seconds later, spend. You could yeah spending because uh, you know your wallet has essentially different different bills to to pull from. Um, but it's the issue where there's you're onboarding somebody new, and and it is you know you run I I run into it especially like yeah conferences or going around giving out Monero and somebody's like oh cool I got my Monero can I you know like maybe there'll be an instance <laughs> where I'll give somebody Monero right and they're like cool now I'll buy a coffee with it because you're selling coffee I'm like well uh, come back in uh, ten, ten minutes you know, <laughs> I have to brew it come back in twenty minutes you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, what you know so it it, it is you know and. Th- unfortunately you know that's that's how people operate right they're not they're going to look holistically at the whole technology and be like well it's worth it for all these reasons because i'm getting yeah. private digital cash they're like what the hell if i can't turn around and spend this right away that's that's an issue so i i think yeah obviously we should strive to get rid of it and like you said i think with full membership proofs there might be a way i'm trying to think if i asked luke uh, uh that question at MoneroCon when i interviewed him i think i might have i don't even remember what his what his response. i gotta go back and look but uh maybe we'll maybe we'll do a monero talk just on this topic soon enough um and try to bring some of the experts on oh yeah that'd be amazing because there's like i've been looking for stuff and like i all of it's just so lofty because it's all like dev to dev right now like there's no like you know there's no like zero to full membership proof as far as i know this that book doesn't exist i would love to hear like a when when co used to talk about this he made it sound like you know it's like i you know no i I hope i'm not misinterpreting but when i used to talk to him you made it sound like you know it's it's we're we're not like getting rid of you know the 10 10 minute lock time where 20 minute lock uh it's it's not it's not gonna happen it's not on the cards because of Oh, because of ring signal. No, back in the day, but now, now I see, now I see, now I see that there, there's hope there, uh, especially with the upgrade to full membership proofs and with Surface. I haven't heard, you know, um, a precise solution like you said, because I don't think there is one yet. But I mm-hmm. think there is more hope than ever that there is, there is a way now. There will, we will find a way to do it. Um, what is this? What is this? What is it? What is, it? What is this person saying? That is a quote. Apparently, this is what Luke said. Okay. Eliminating the Tem blocks lock is unaffected. The tree roots contain all outputs, so any reorg of outputs will provide a different tree root, voting the transaction reliant on the original tree root. So what does that mean, guys? So it sounds like this person says... I don't know if that means it's possible or not. We we we, we gotta get, we gotta get the pros on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> talking about, about the issue. But I mean, the 
you know, the, the dumbed down uh, Doug Tooman take is I, I see hope. I think, you know, mm -hmm. a, a year or two ago, the, the hope wasn't really there that it'd be happening anytime soon. But now I think there there is hope that we can figure out a way to get rid of it. But like you said, I'm 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 gonna spoil it. But if you're using a, a certain wallet, they've already sort of solved this issue. But I'm gonna get to it at the end. But before we get there, I'm gonna have a quick quiz. I don't know, are, there, are people enjoying the quizzes at the end? I don't know. I feel like I'll be back in school. I don't know. Maybe entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Want a minute or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the past five years, Monero's biggest reorg was either two. Three, six, or eight. Basically, a reorg is basically when you get a chain split. You can think about it as a, a, a mini a mini fork, essentially. So Monero's in the past five-ish years, what do y'all think the biggest chain fork was and uh, reorganization-wise? What do y'all think? I don't I don't know this one. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know either. Oh, the answer was is three. three? I think like uh -huh. three. Sorry. Because it is basically based off of, I believe, Howard Chu, yeah. the guy, the, the team behind Random X, keeps like a log of all these things. So I believe that in in his logs, he said the biggest one was three, and there was only like four of them. So they're all they're not. So I guess if if you if the Monero devs were really sketchy, they could they could make it a four block lock, and then you you would hopefully never hit that if if they were sketchy, which you shouldn't do that. But that's just the interesting idea that. The biggest one has been three in the past five years, which is interesting. Alaska and I knew in the chat. I don't know how you knew that. I didn't know that before doing research to this. So if you knew this before, you're you're another level. And like I said, if you're using a certain wallet, um, Doug, if it, if it didn't have it in the narrow space, Doug has a video on it. So um, there's actually a, a feature of in, called Pocket Change put out by the um, I don't want to mess the name up, but the Android wallet. And and Doug had the interview with them talking about it, and it's really cool. And basically, what it does is, <laughs> basically, what it does is that it breaks up your input so that you you have more of them, and you, you don't have to wait for each one to unlock. And it's really cool feature is live today. If you're using the Manero Monero Joe, I don't want to pronounce it. Yeah, well, how you say it, Doug? Monero Joe. Yeah, that I wallet. Know. I don't even know if I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> if you're using that wallet, they have a pocket change feature that you can literally get people onto. Hopefully, Cake Wallet gets something like this. I feel like my my go-to wallet, my recommended people is Cake Wallet. It's very slick, very slick. Hopefully, they get a feature like this. So if you onboard people into it quickly, you know you don't have to wait for them to. You can enable this for them, and they can just spend it back and forth pretty quickly. Uh, I think that's real it for me. Hopefully, this issue gets solved. But this was again, it's like. 20 minutes for like for like cheap private payments isn't that big of a deal. But like Doug said, you know, newbies can have an issue with it, et cetera, et cetera. But that's pretty much it for me. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, awesome. Thank you, dude. Yeah, ho hopefully it was well. I, I, it was a bit it was it was a lot covered, but hopefully I, I got I try to find the right abstraction level. I don't I won't get too far in the weeds, but also I don't want to be like too abstract and hand wavy if you walk away being like I don't know what he was talking about, but hopefully it was it was good. Trying to get better. <laughs> yeah, no. too smart, man. <laughs> no, no, no. These guys like Luke, the the, the Tevador, these guys, they're they, they do such the core devs do such a good job documenting everything. They have week like meetings every week on the GitHub post. It's very easy for people to follow along who who aren't cryptographers. It's really they do a really good job, honestly. Like I said, there's GitHub GitHub issue about this. They have meetings. You even look up. It's like if you Google Monero Monero Meta GitHub. It'll show up. So I mean, it's really good stuff. Praise the devs; they do a great job keeping everyone up in in the loop, and they know what's going on. They do some great work. But yeah, all praise to the devs. <laughs> Alrighty, good job. Awesome. Good Thanks, Jigun. Sure, we'll see you.